Welcome to Runegistics, where I make fast guides that cut straight to the point and help you get your OSRS tasks done as quickly as possible. Today's walkthrough is for the minigame Winter Toad, and we'll cover requirements and a few quick tips to meet those requirements, getting there, objectives, suggested inventory, mechanics, and rewards. I'll be weaving through playing in a group setting and playing solo since this minigame is a good option for both setups. There's also a first time solo walkthrough where I'll detail exactly what to do to easily solo this minigame. As a quick note, I would absolutely recommend to anyone to do this on mobile, especially after you've gotten the mechanics and feel for the phases down, which you should realistically get after defeating the Winter Tote two or three times. Feel free to utilize the chapters in the video timeline to navigate to whichever section of information you are interested in. Before attempting the Winter Tote minigame, there's a few hard requirements and maybe one soft requirement I'd recommend. The first hard requirement is 50 fire making, which is technically the only skill you need to begin this minigame. Though it's not absolutely necessary, I would also put having the herb lore and construction skills unlocked as hard requirements as well. Completion of the quest Druidic Ritual and purchasing a player own house are the two pretty simple tasks you have to complete for this. Herb lore is needed to pick Bruma herbs during the minigame, which are needed to make potions that heal the pyromancers managing the braziers, which is a pretty important mechanic in this minigame. Construction isn't necessary, but the experience you get from repairing the braziers when the winter tote damages them is pretty substantial and something I wouldn't want to miss out on personally. The last hard requirement is having four pieces of warm clothes. These are basically just specific gear pieces that allow you to play the minigame without taking damage from the cold of the winter tote. There's multiple options when it comes to warm clothes you can gather before starting Starting, which I'll list out right here. If you have four of these pieces available, go for it. If not, the universally preferred option is the Clue Hunter's outfit, a cosmetic set which can be gathered relatively fast. One soft recommendation I'd have for this minigame is 60 Agility, especially if you want to do the Winter Tote solo. The minigame map is basically a square, with each corner having a Brazier and a Pyromancer damaging the boss. On the north side of the map, there's a shortcut that requires 60 Agility to cross. This shortcut is the only connection between the northwestern and northeastern corners of the map, aside from running around the full circuit, which can very quickly drain your run energy. Being able to use this shortcut is vital, especially if you're doing it solo. If you're doing it in a large group, you can honestly just disregard this. However, if you want to have a little insurance in case this does happen, I would bring some kind of consumable that restores run energy. So bring a few summer pies, energy potions, stamina potions, or any of the other items that help you just run a little bit longer. There's a couple of quick ways of getting to the Winter Tote Camp in Northern Karen where the minigame is located. Personally, I'd use a games necklace, which can be made by casting a level 1 enchant spell on a sapphire necklace. This will take you right to the camp. If not, you can also use fairy rings if you have them unlocked, but there's a caveat to that. The closest fairy ring is code CIS, taking you just north of Arkea. Unfortunately, this fairy ring can only be used once you pay Trosa 80,000 GP to unlock. It's a good option if you want to drop the GP and don't want to constantly have to have games necklaces handy, but games necklaces are so simple and easy to make and have such a low crafting requirement, I still would just go with those. The objective of the minigame is relatively simple. Reduce the Winter Tote's energy to zero. To do this, you'll need to keep at least one of the Braziers in the four corners of the map lit, and the Pyromancers manning those Braziers healed. As said, only one corner of the map needs to have the lit Brazier and a healthy Pyromancer. The more Braziers and Pyromancers running, the faster the Winter Tote's energy will fall. If at any point there are no Braziers lit or Pyromancers healthy, the Winter Tote will slowly begin to heal energy. Along the way to zero energy, there's multiple mechanics you have to deal with that will damage you, which I'll cover in depth in the mechanics section. With that being said, be warned that this is not a safe minigame. You absolutely can die and I watch people die all the time. It's not the most AFK activity in this game. So just be wary of that if you're playing a hardcore Iron Man. Because of this design, I would honestly say the minigame is really just a skilling DPS race. Beat the Winter Tote before it beats you. It's really only one phase, so let's get through what you'll need and what mechanics you'll need to do to beat this minigame. As a prereq note, all items needed for the Winter Tote aside from warm clothes are available in the lobby area of the southern part of the minigame map. In the bins located to the left and right sides when you walk in the giant doors of Din. Fighting the Winter Tote will require the following item. An axe to cut down the Bruma logs, a tinder box to light the braziers, a hammer to repair the braziers when they are damaged, and plenty of good healing food since you'll be taking substantial damage throughout the encounter. Optionally, you can bring a knife to fletch the Bruma logs into kindling, which we'll get more into in the mechanics section. Other helpful but optional items you can bring is anything that will help you heal faster. This would include something like a phoenix necklace, hit points cape, regen bracelet, things like that. Healing is a paramount part of doing the Winter Tote solo. Not so much doing 
doing it in a group setting. Also, as stated earlier, if you're planning to do a solo run, anything to help restore run energy, especially if your agility is low, will be beneficial. So let's get into the mechanics of the Winter Tote game. The Winter Tote map is super simple. A small lobby with crates containing the items needed to do the mini game, followed by a giant square area with the boss located right in the center. In each corner of the square, you have a Brazier, Pyromancer, and a Bruma Tree. On the far left and right sides, you have sprouting roots. And in the very back of the square, there's a gap connected by a few stepping stones, which requires 60 agility to cross. I'll break this down as easily as I can to save us all some time. There's basically six elements to the winter tote, which I just listed out and are labeled right here. Additionally, there are three more mechanics the winter tote uses throughout the encounter. Nine things to remember, Let's dig into each one and then at the end of the section, I'll do a quick recap of it all. Element one, the crate slash lobby. The lobby inside the Winter Tote has six crates containing bronze axes, unfinished rejuve potions, knives, hammers, and tinder boxes. Unless you forget, you should bring everything with you prior to starting, aside from the rejuvenation potions. We'll talk more about the rejuvenation potions in just a second. Also, an important note, the Winter Tote cannot damage you while you are in this lobby. That's super important for later, so stay tuned. Element two is the Brazier. The Braziers are one of the two elements that are used to defeat the Winter Toad, with the other being the Pyromancers. I say one of two because the Braziers and Pyromancers must be active to damage the Winter Toad. Your job in this minigame really is just to keep at least one of these Braziers lit at all times. You do this by lighting the Brazier with your tinderbox. The more Braziers you have lit, the faster the Winter Toad goes down. Once you light it, it will stay lit until the Winter Toad puts it out using a Brazier attack, which gets us to our first mechanic. Mechanic one is the Brazier attack. The Winter Tote occasionally will cause a small or large flurry of snow to appear above one or more of the Braziers in the area, or the Pyromancers manning the Brazier. A small flurry of snow over the Brazier indicates the attack will put out the flame of the Brazier. Once the flame goes out, all you need to do is simply relight the flame with your tinderbox again. You will not be damaged by a small Brazier attack. On the contrast, a large flurry of snow indicates the attack will not only put out the flame, but completely damage the Brazier, as well as do a healthy amount of damage to the Pyromancer manning it. Additionally, if you are standing on a tile adjacent to the Brazier when the large Brazier attack hits, you will be damaged by the shrapnel and take a pretty juicy amount of damage from it. To combat the large flurry, first make sure you move away from the Brazier before it hits. All you need to do is have at least one empty tile between you and the Brazier. This will prevent any damage directly to you. Next, you need to use your hammer to repair the damaged Brazier. Once repaired, you'll have to light it again using your tinderbox. A good tip here is utilizing the in-game HUD to see which braziers are lit, unlit, and need repairing. This is all you need to do to combat the brazier attack. Now let's get back to the elements and take a look at element number two, the pyromancers. So element number two, the pyromancers. Each brazier has a pyromancer manning it, which serves as the second of the two mechanics that are necessary to defeat the winter toad. Pyromancers will continuously shoot fire into the Winter Toad, assuming they are not at zero HP and the Braziers are lit. So in layman's terms, winning this game is just keeping the Braziers lit and the Pyromancers healthy. Pyromancers have 15 HP and are damaged by two of the three Winter Toad mechanics, all of which are unavoidable by them. The first one we just mentioned, the Brazier attack, which can damage the Pyromancer in two ways. The first being the large attack where the Brazier hits the Pyromancer. The second is when the small snow flurry appears over the Pyromancer's head. As stated, this is unavoidable and just means the Pyromancer will take some amount of damage in the next couple steps. Mechanic number two is the area attack. Occasionally during the minigame, blocks of snow and snow flurries will appear on a 3x3 grid. This signals an incoming area attack. This is always targeted wherever you are standing, which oftentimes is right next to a Brazier and a Pyromancer. If you are hit by this attack, you will take an ugly chunk of damage and have to continue knowing you didn't simply move out of the 3x3 grid before it hits. Important to note, the wiki does state that Braziers hit by this attack will be destroyed and need to be repaired, and that Pyromancers will take damage from this attack. Personally though, I've never seen them actually get hit or the Braziers damaged, but it's just something to keep an eye out for. Once a Pyromancer's HP hits zero, it will stop casting at the Winter Tote and kneel to the ground, waiting for you to heal it. Pyromancers are healed by using Rejuvenation Potions, which are made from the unfinished Rejuvenation Potions found in the lobby, and the Bruma Herbs, which are picked from element number four. Element number four are the sprouting roots. To get a rejuvenation potion, simply pick a broom or herb from the root and then combine it with the unfinished potion. You'll have four doses per potion you make and only one is necessary to heal the pyromancer. Click on the pyromancer to heal it and voila, they are back in business. As a note, one dose of the rejuvenation potion will heal all 15 HP of the pyromancer if they are at zero. 
If they are still up but have taken damage, you can still use the Rejuvenation Potion on them, which will heal 5 HP. This uh, clever use of mechanics will become much more clear once we get into the solo walkthrough. Element 5. Element 5 of the Winter Tote is the Agility Shortcut, which is super straightforward. If you want to cut across the back of the square map, you need 60 Agility. Otherwise, you have to run all the way around. This is rarely important in a group setting, as I said earlier, but in a solo run, this is basically an RIP to your run energy if you have to go from one side to the other. The last element of Winter Tote is element six, the Bruma Tree. Technically speaking, you could completely ignore cutting roots from the Bruma Tree and feeding them to the Brazier, and it wouldn't change completing this minigame at all. However, the Bruma Tree is the primary method to gaining points during this minigame. Basically, the mechanic here is to use your axe and chop at the tree, receiving Bruma Roots in your inventory. Once you have them, you run to a Lit Brazier and feed the roots into the fire which gives you fire making XP and 10 points added to your minigame total. Alternatively, once you have the Bruma Roots, you can choose to fletch them with a knife, which will turn them into a Bruma Kindling. The pros to doing this are you gain fletching XP and you get 25 minigame points rather than feeding just 10 with the locks. Ask any, uh, I guess, experienced Winter Tote hero and you'll likely get differing answers on whether to fletch or not to fletch. Ultimately, it's pretty clear cut to me at least. If you're chasing fire making XP, skip the fletching. If you want faster points or want to get some additional fletching XP, knock yourself out. There is no real wrong answer here. During the solo walkthrough, I do fletch because it provides the fastest points per hour. So that's all the elements, and we have just one more mechanic, which I call the cold attack. The wiki calls it the standard attack, I prefer the cold attack. Basically, it's just periodic, unavoidable random damage, and the amount of damage is tied directly to your hit points level. This mechanic is combated by three things. Wearing warm clothes, keeping the braziers lit, and getting the winter toad's energy low. There's actually a formula on the wiki that shows how much damage you can take from the winter toad based on the warm clothing you wear, but if you're watching this and you're a beginner, let me just say this now. Wear four pieces of warm clothing for the love of God. You will get absolutely trained if you aren't wearing four pieces. The second way to combat this damage is by keeping three or more braziers lit. This reduces the frequency of the random damage appearing. In a group setting, at least three braziers are lit almost universally, so you shouldn't have anything to worry about. In a solo run, this can be a huge problem especially if you don't have a high enough agility for the shortcut or weight reducing clothing to prevent your run energy from depleting while you're frantically trying to keep all the braziers lit. Luckily, you only need to keep them lit long enough to drain the Winter Toad's energy. Which brings us to the third way to combat the cold attack. As you drain the Winter Toad's energy, the frequency of the cold attack decreases pretty drastically, especially after it drops below 30%. In a solo setting, this typically takes a couple of minutes of keeping all the braziers lit. Once it drops below 30%, it will continue to use the cold attack, but you shouldn't expect it more than once every uh, couple minutes or so. We'll cover this more in the solo walkthrough. So let's recap it really quick. Six elements of the Winter Tote and the three damaging mechanics. Element one is the lobby slash crates. Here you get all the tools you need that you might have forgotten as well as unfinished rejuvenation potions. This is also a safe space and the Winter Tote cannot hurt you here. Element number two, the brazier. Keep it lit using the tinderbox. Repair it when it gets damaged. That's it. Element three, the pyromancer. Keep them above zero HP using rejuvenation potions. You can heal them with the potions regardless if they are at zero or one to 14 HP. And remember, the only way to damage the winter tote is to have both the brazier lit and the pyromancer healed above zero HP at the same time. Element number four, the bruma tree. Does not matter when it comes to defeating the winter tote. The only existence it has is to give you more points. Cut at the tree using your axe, then feed the Bruma Roots into the Lit Brazier. Optionally, you can fletch the roots into Bruma Kindling prior to feeding them into the Brazier. This gives more points and some fletching XP, but it's less fire making XP per hour. Element number five are the Sprouting Roots. Used in conjunction with the unfinished rejuvenation potions taken from the crates in the lobby. You can pick these roots to get the Bruma Herb, then combine them with the unfinished potion and you get a four dose rejuvenation potion, which is used to heal the Pyromancers. Element number six, the agility shortcut. No one cares in a group setting. In a solo setting, it exists to slow you down and drain run energy. Requires 60 agility to cross it. Mechanic number one, the brazier attack. Three different types, only one can hurt you. There's two variations of the small brazier attack where small snow flurries appear over either the brazier or the pyromancer. If it's over the brazier, it will put the fire out. If it's over the pyromancer, they will take a random amount of damage. The large brazier attack is when the large snow flurry appears over the brazier. This will destroy the brazier, damage the pyromancer, and damage you if you are standing on a tile adjacent to the brazier. Move away from the brazier when this appears. Once it's over, repair and relight the brazier and heal the pyromancer if necessary. Mechanic number two, the area attack. Three by three grid of snow forms on the ground. You need to move out of this grid or you will take a large amount of damage. Per the wiki, 
If the Brazier is in this grid, it will be damaged and need repairing. Per the wiki, if the Pyromancer is in the grid, it will take 10 to 15% of your HP as damage. Mechanic number three is the Cold Attack. Random, unavoidable damage directly tied to your HP level. Combated by wearing warm clothes, keeping three or more Braziers lit, and or getting the Winter Totes energy low, ideally below 30%. It seems like a lot, I know, but like most OSRS minigames, Winter Tote is a super cyclical form of gameplay. After you do it a few times, you're easily going to get a feel for it. Keep the Braziers lit, Pyromancers healed, feed Broomroots and Kindling into the flames to increase your point total. That's it. It's that simple. Speaking of which, here's the list of points you get for each action you perform during the minigame. Once the Winter Tote's energy reaches zero, the game will end and you will receive a supply crate assuming you received enough points to get one. You need 500 points to get a crate and every 500 points after that will earn you an extra roll in your reward. This compounds, meaning that if I get 1250 points, I get two rolls in my crate guaranteed and a 50% chance to get a third roll. Since I had 250 points toward the next 500, cap of rewards for any crate is 13,500 points. Winter Tote is basically THE mini game for rewards, especially for Iron Man. You can get herbs, seeds, logs, gems, fish, or almost every raw material you can possibly think of. Additionally, you may get super lucky and hit the unique table, offering one of these rewards. Crazy enough, as I was making this guide and writing the script, I got a dragon axe from a crate, which is a 1 in 10,000 drop chance. Also a chance for the phoenix pet for any collectors out there. If you skip straight to the solo walkthrough, welcome to the video. If not, here's where you get rewarded. So let's go through how I would recommend for a first time solo walkthrough of the Winter Tote. This method is extremely safe and takes into account someone who is still early on in their journey. As such, I won't be utilizing any of the helpful items or gear mentioned earlier, but if you have them, by all means, bring what you can. Here's the equipment and inventory to bring. You have options here, but it's absolutely mandatory to bring four pieces of warm clothing. You should also bring the best axe you have to increase wood cutting speed and the best healing food you can possibly get. Anything that has multiple pieces of food such as pies or pizzas would be helpful as well, especially if you're lower level. If this is your first time, seriously, don't be ashamed to literally fill your entire inventory with food. You go through it pretty quickly, especially in the beginning. Plus, if you think it's cluttered, you can always eat a few extra pieces of food here and there. Aside from that, you'll need a tinderbox, a knife, and a hammer. And lastly, the most important thing here, anything that can restore run energy. Solo strategies wholly depend on your ability to get the winter tote below 30%. Once you do that, the rest of the time is very simple and straightforward. But early on, you're going to be running around a lot, especially if you don't have 60 agility for the shortcut in the back. For this example, I'm bringing some energy potions. Since they only require 26 herb lore to make, or you can buy them from the Apothecary in Varrock for one chocolate dust and two limpwort roots. Basically, they're easier to obtain than most run energy restoration items. Obviously, if you can buy stamina pots or summer pies, they'll be just as good here, if not better. So with our equipment and inventory ready to go, let's get into it. Once you enter the doors of Din, you need to make sure someone else isn't actually doing the Winter Tote in that world. You can easily tell if the world is available because the Winter Tote's energy will be at 100% and none of the Braziers will be lit. Once you find an available world, make sure your run energy is capped at 100. Then, immediately start lighting the Braziers on the map. If you have 60 agility for the shortcut in the back, utilize it. If not, just make sure all four Braziers are lit, keeping an eye on the in-game HUD. Watch your health too, because the cold attack from the Winter Tote will hit you very, very frequently early on. It's not outrageous to think you might lose over 50% of your food pretty early on if you're lower level. That's fine though, the damage will reduce over time. Once all four are lit, run back to one of the sprouting roots and pick at least one of the broom herbs, if not more. Try to get at least four or five if possible. Then run back to the lobby. Going back to the lobby prevents you from taking any additional unnecessary damage from the Winter Tote's cold attack. You can stand here and passively gain a small amount of run energy back while prepping your rejuvenation potions. Here you're basically waiting for the winter tote to begin putting out or damaging braziers or damaging pyromancers. Once you start seeing the braziers go out is when the solo method can get very chaotic for some people, especially new players. Immediately go start repairing and relighting any of the braziers, as well as healing any of the pyromancers that have fallen. You should be utilizing the HUD very heavily here. Depending on your RNG, you will be running around all over the place, and your energy will likely be getting really low. Make sure to use your run energy restoration item here as needed. Ultimately, you want to have all four braziers hitting the winter tote as much as possible, until around 30%. Uh, Once the winter tote hits that mark, you've made it through the worst of it. At this point, the cold attack of the winter tote will happen a lot less frequently. Because of this, you can continuously farm points until you start running low on food or hit the 13,000 point cap whatever comes first. 
To perform this method, pick one of the braziers in the southeastern or western corners of the map. This will be your home base and you will only work on this brazier. Make sure the winter tote isn't at a point where its energy can go back over 30%. Also make sure you have enough rejuvenation potions in your inventory. I normally aim to have uh, about six to eight at any given time in my inventory, depending on how much space I have. You will go through these very quickly and need to gather more of them multiple times during this run. At this point, you should have your tinderbox, hammer, knife, food, and potions in your inventory with a few spaces left over. From 30% or wherever you're at right now, all the way to the last 5%, you'll be following these specific priorities. Your filler activity when you're farming points is cutting and fletching bruma roots. Do this when no other options are available. Likewise with feeding bruma kindling into the fire. Though this does take a priority over cutting and fletching because you actually get points for it. The only additional part here is if you see your brazier go out, it's okay if you finish filling up your inventory with logs. Running back and forth to relight the brazier can be very annoying and isn't very efficient. So if you have 8 open spaces for logs, feel free to just wait it out and fill up those spaces prior to moving back to the brazier. As I just stated, the next priority is feeding the kindling you get. This is pretty obvious and I won't dig much deeper into it, just feed the kindling into the fire. Just above processing bruma roots and feeding kindling is relighting the braziers. If a small brazier attack happens, relight the brazier as quickly as possible. This not only ensures the winter tote's energy isn't increasing, but you also get 25 points for doing so. It's extremely common to find yourself relighting a brazier, then it immediately gets put out and you light it again, then it gets destroyed and you have to fix it again, uh, you get the idea. This annoys a lot of people, but look at it as basically you're getting to add one extra kindling to the fire every time you relight it. You're still getting points on top of additional fire making XP. This is actually making the game faster. Above relighting braziers is repairing them. Obviously you can't light the brazier if it's damaged. Plus, I'll be honest, the construction XP from fixing the brazier really adds up over time which is super nice especially when you're a lower level but really the reason is you get 25 points for repairing the brazier then another 25 for lighting it immediately after meaning every time you repair a brazier you're going to be getting 50 points Finally, the main priority, at least for this strategy. Earlier in the video, I mentioned that when you heal a pyromancer that is at 0 HP, basically on the ground, then it goes right back up to 15 HP, 100% of its health. However, none of the attacks from the Winter Tote one-shot a pyromancer. Because of this, a lot of times their health is actually between 1 and 14 HP. When you use a rejuvenation potion on a pyromancer while it's still alive, but below 100%, it heals for only 5 HP. Whether you heal a pyromancer at 0 HP or at 14 HP, you get 30 points. The most you get for any activity in this minigame. In order to optimize the number of points you're getting per hour, I would always prioritize using rejuvenation potions to heal the pyromancer at any time when their HP is not at 100%. Oftentimes you'll see them getting hit for 8 to 13 damage, which will require 2 to 3 doses of rejuvenation potion to fully heal. This equates to 60 to 90 points and these events add up so quickly. Obviously, unless you're sweating in your chair without blinking for hours on end, you might miss a chance to heal a Pyromancer, and that's, that's totally okay, man. Just keep an eye on the opportunity to use a dose of the potion. The points will add up much quicker this way. These are the priorities for the strategy until the Winter Tote reaches about 5%. Since you almost always have at least one Brazier lit, the Winter Tote's energy still decreases, albeit very slowly, which can be problematic because if it hits zero and you're still farming points, you have to resupply and redo the first 130%, which is honestly just so damn inefficient. The Winter Tote reaches 5% only sometimes, really, and sometimes it doesn't, depending on what your RNG is. So don't think if it doesn't drop to 5%, you're doing something wrong. The ultimate goal here really is just to keep it in the sweet spot of 5-15% to energy to minimize the amount of damage you're taking from the cold attack. If the Winter Tote does drop to 5% HP, you're still following the same priorities, with the only change being that you move relighting the Brazier to the very bottom of the priority list. Doing this means you should be cutting your Bruma Logs and then fletching them without relighting the Brazier if it goes out. By doing this, no Braziers will be lit for a little while while you're fletching, giving the Winter Tote a chance to recharge its energy. I typically keep doing this priority until the Winter Tote gets back up to 10%. Then I dance back and forth between prioritizing relighting the Brazier and not relighting it. 
This may take some getting used to, but the way I see it, if this is the only part that's difficult to master, you're already very far ahead of the game. So those are the priorities, along with the major obvious priorities of avoiding damage, restocking your rejuvenation potions when necessary, and eating when you need to. I typically try to restock my rejuvenation potions when I only have one left because I know that I'm going to use that one pretty quickly. Basically, you follow this process until you get to around, I'd say 12,700 or 12,800 points. At that point, you want to end the game and you can just run the circuit of the map healing the pyromancers and relighting the braziers. This is basically just a miniature version of the beginning of the game and can be annoying just like it was then, but just be patient and diligent and eventually the winter Toad's energy will reach 0%. Don't panic here because you've already done more than enough to prove you are more than capable of finishing this boss off. If you need to do this step prior to hitting the 13,000 point mark because you've run out of food or need to just end the game early, feel free to do so. Just run around lighting the braziers and healing until the game ends. And trust me, at the end of it all, you will be rewarded. This game took exactly 42 and a half minutes to complete, and I got the 13,000 point cap, meaning I received 28 reward rolls. Extrapolating that out, it's about uh, 40 rolls per hour. I know there's better methods out there, like scouting mass worlds and jumping to them, but honestly, that's just such a cumbersome job. I like for this to be simple and chill. I think 40 reward rolls is pretty damn good per hour. Also, I'm not really concerned with XP rates here, and you shouldn't be either. This minigame is literally a hack for fire making XP. You get so much, does it really even matter what the rates are? So. If you were successful in soloing the Winter Tote, seriously, congratulations. This is not an easy task to complete, especially if you're really new to OSRS. You should be proud of that because it is an accomplishment. Now you can sit back and watch your fire making, fletching, construction, woodcutting, all these levels slowly rise up while stockpiling an extremely useful amount of raw materials. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to leave a like. I enjoy making guides for newer players to show them that it's not as hard as you would think. If we want this game to keep being popular, we need to keep the newer players interested. That's my ultimate goal here. If you're interested in learning another similar mini game that other people also consider difficult, I'll leave a link in the description. And if you like this format and want to be notified of more guides on topics such as Slayer, quests, other mini games, bosses, subscribe for future content. Until then, I'll see you guys on the next one.